Okay, so some things that you need for making a boost leak detector is a silicone hose. I got this for $7.99 at AutoZone. What's nice about this is it's got a 2.5 inch adapter and a, it's, you can also use it for 3 inches. So that's the first thing you'll need. A PVC cap that fits onto your silicone hose. This is um, a 2.5, but it fits pretty nice. So not much room. Not much clearance. And what I like about the threads is that it'll give you extra grip. The next thing you'll need is a washer and a gasket together. Schrader valve. And the 1 8 locking nut for your Schrader valve. Okay, now that you got your all your parts, you want to start by drilling the bottom for the Schrader valve. As you can see, it's pretty wide, so... Luckily, this hole that's in the middle is the same dimensions as it, so matches up pretty good. If you need to, you can get some ink and just get the top of your cap on and then just press it on and that'll give you a dimension, but it didn't come out too well. So I'll give you guide marks where to go. I got a Dremel tool which will drill in the depth for me. I want to drill a little bit deeper because the Schrader valve will not fit all the way through. So I'm going to start with that. It's starting to fit the thread so I'll just do this all the way through for the threads. I have a little bit more to go. This is the test fit, make sure it fits. A little gap and no problem. That can be fixed up with sealer, but pretty good around. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mark the edges here and see if I can't dremel this in a little further. Always check how far you're going. Clean it up. That's what it looks like right now. It's probably the deepest I can get it. And now the thread's sticking out enough to put that washer. But I'm going to do it just a little bit better. I'm going to put your Schrader valve in. Make sure it fits nice and flush. Tighten it extra with pliers. Make sure you don't ruin the stem or any of the threads. So see how that fits nice and flush. And there's tons of thread on the other side. Push, put your washer and gasket in, like so. Put your locking nut, one eighth inch lock nut on. Okay, now you want to tighten it. Try to crush that gasket. Get a nice tight seal. Alright, that's pretty dang tight. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put some, some epoxy in there to get all those little holes in there. Just in case the rubber, ba rubber gasket doesn't stop all the air. Next you want to mix up your epoxy. This will take 24 hours to cure, so... So mix it nice and slowly, make sure you get no bubbles. Okay, so for the last part of this video, you'll just need a screwdriver. Super glue, this is the gel, ultra gel. It has a lot of control, it doesn't drip everywhere. And then the two parts you want to join together. So you want to start by opening your super glue. I would do it at the bottom, the middle, and the top on the threads. Don't go overboard. Okay, and just pop it on and have your hose clamps ready to go. Let's go back and forth tightening them. These aren't really high quality clamps, so don't tighten them too much. All right, and that's not gonna be going anywhere. And this is what your finished product looks like. I'm 
gonna start by putting this on. The nice thing about just using the regular Schrader valve is that you can use a pump, a bicycle pump, which I have with a gauge. Let's tighten this bolt up. And you can hear some of the leaks already. And then just look and find all of them. There's one down here. That's where I was thinking that some of them might have come. Alright, this is uh, just a test of the boost leak tester. Um, I had these metal gaskets on there. They were pretty bad. I hate them. Every time I see them, I cringe. But I got these OEM ones. They're like rubber. They're pretty stiff. So, just put them on. Now I got a cap on this, the one side. That's all ready to go. And then just pump it up. Alright, getting up towards 20 psi. It's holding pretty st steady.